Today, we're gonna do hard science reading comp, and I'm gonna show you for sure, you don't have to understand everything in order to get all the questions right. I also wanna share with you my top five tips for learning lots of vocabulary very fast. These tips are really specific, they're all science-based. Most of my students find that they can learn about 50% more words in the same amount of time using these techniques. It's yours completely free, you can download it right in the description. When you're reading science passages, you're probably not gonna be able to understand everything and that's okay. You can still get all the questions right. Your goal is to exit the reading with a very good understanding of the main points and a much less good understanding of the details. Remember, read incredibly and stupidly literally. Don't assume anything. Any evidence for any correct answer needs to be there in black and white. Let's take a look at an example and you can see how this works. The most important thing when you approach any reading comp passage is to focus in on single declarative sentences that you can actually understand and also conclusion-y type sentences. I want you to read over or simply ignore examples or details or jargon. Those things are put in the passage to try and confuse you and to try and drag you down into the weeds. As much as possible, we want you focusing on the main points of the passage. Okay, so this is how I read this. Hey, the first sentence I actually understand. David McKay began studying this meteorite. Great. Second sentence, I understand. The McKay team announced that this meteorite originated on Mars and it contains compelling evidence that life once existed on Mars. Okay, I understood both of those. This evidence, including the discovery of organic molecules, uh-oh, I don't understand any of this. I'm not a scientist, so I'm reading over it. Okay. I, next paragraph, I generally pay attention to the first sentences of each paragraph. Skepticism about the McKay's team claims remain. Okay, so they're skeptics. Great. However, for example, uh-oh, uh, I don't understand this example at all. Uh, however, McKay's team demonstrated, okay, so they're coming back that the uh-oh, and I don't understand what they're demonstrating, but I understand they have a counter argument. The skeptic's strongest argument, okay, this is good. What is their strongest argument? is that the process unrelated to organic life can produce all the evidence found by McKay's team. That I understand, including PAHs, that I don't understand. For example, oh boy, this way over my head, don't understand that. Yet McKay's team, okay, so McKay is coming back, I get that, notes that particular combination, of, uh oh, I don't understand <laughs> what they're coming back with or any of that science, okay. But this, what we just read, is enough, is more than enough to set you up to get all of the questions right. All right, the stuff in yellow is the stuff that I actually read and understood, and it's gonna be more than enough to answer the four questions and get all the other questions right too. Okay, so what is this about? It's does the meteorite prove that there's life on Mars? What's the author's point of view? The author says the evidence is compelling. Are there other points of view? There sure are, there are skeptics. And what's the tone? The tone is actually fairly neutral. The author is basically going back and forth between the arguments. So what are we gonna find in the middle? What is the main point of, of each of these two paragraphs? Well, paragraph one is all about the meteorite proving that light does exist on Mars. Paragraph two is really a back and forth between the skeptics evidence and McKay's evidence. All right, with that, we're gonna be able to get all the questions right. This first question is a primary purpose question. Here's a pro tip. The answer to primary purpose questions are always gonna be the answer choice that is closest to the answers that you jotted down to the four questions you always ask yourself. What is it about? Does the meteorite prove there's life on Mars? What's the author's point of view? The evidence is compelling. Are there other points of view? Yeah, they're skeptics. And what's the tone? The tone is neutral. Okay, let's go through the answer choices and see which answer choice is closest to our answers to those four questions. A, describe new ways of studying the possibility that life existed on Mars. Do we ever in our answers to those four questions talk about a new way of studying the possibility of life on Mars? No, this is all from like 1994. B, revise a theory regarding the existence of life on Mars. Do we ever mention that there's a theory and that we're revising a theory in our four questions? No, we don't. C, reconcile conflicting viewpoints regarding the possibility that life once existed on Mars. Maybe, because we know that we have two points of view, right? We have skeptics and we have McKay. We can keep C in the maybe bucket. Uh, D, evaluate a recently proposed argument. What is the recently proposed argument? All these arguments come from like 1994. D is definitely not right. E, 
describe a controversy okay, concerning the significance of evidence from this meteorite. Okay, maybe because we definitely have a controversy. We have two points of view and we know that that second paragraph is kind of going back and forth between the, the two points of view. So what do we like better? Do we like C or do we like E better? C says that we reconcile the conflicting viewpoints. Yeah, the conflicting viewpoints, but in the end they all come together. No, that never happens. The best answer choice is E. It's describing a controversy, that's neutral. There's definitely a controversy because they're skeptics. E, good job. This is an example of a detailed question and these are important, they come up a lot. Anytime the question says that the author asserts or says or states or something like that, you know you're in a detailed question, which means the answer will be obviously and explicitly stated in the passage. In other words, you'll know it when you see it, but you still have to read very literally. A is wrong. The passage never says McKay was the first to say the meteorite originated from Mars. B looks pretty good. The scientific community generally agrees that the meteorite originated on Mars. That fact is not a matter of widespread scientific dispute. That's exactly what B says. Practically speaking on detail questions, if you're sure you found the evidence, you can probably move on if you're tight on time. If you have a few seconds, it's always best to rule out the other answer choices. C is clearly wrong. Scientists generally agree that the meteorite originated from Mars. Skeptics agree with that. They just don't think it proves that there's life on Mars. D is wrong. Again, scientists agree it's true. And E is wrong for the very same reason. Scientists believe the meteorite originated on Mars. B is correct. Okay, this is another inference question. I told you they were everywhere. Pause the video and take a crack at it. When you're done, come back and we'll walk through it. Okay, a couple of things to help you on hard inference questions. First, put things into your own words. That helps a lot. Second, be very literal. We've talked about that a lot. And if they tell you to look at a certain place in the passage, look there. The evidence must come from that place. In this case, it has to come from somewhere around here. Now, in our own words, that underlined portion means something like, because the meteorite has been on Earth for 13,000 years, the PAHs they see might have been picked up on Earth. So terrestrial literally means Earth. Now, we know for sure that A isn't right. Scientists agree the meteorite did come from Mars. B isn't right because I don't see anything about non-biological processes where they told us to look. There's just nothing there. Now, C might be right. We said the underlying portion means that the PAHs happened or got picked up when the meteorite was on Earth, not when it was on Mars. All right, well, we'll put that in the maybe bucket. Uh, D, D can't be right. Again, they don't say anything about organic molecules where they talk about the meteorite being on Earth for 13,000 years, and they have to. They were the ones who told us to look there. And E, it can't be right for the same reason D can't be right. They simply don't mention anywhere about organic molecules anywhere where they talk about the meteorite being on Earth for 13,000 years. That means C must be right. Nice job. This is another inference question. And you know that for sure, because they use the word suggest. Suggest is always an inference. So go ahead, stop the video and try it on your own. Then come back and we'll go over it. Okay, for inference questions, make sure to get things into your own words. Also, zero in on exactly the place in the passage where they tell you to look and keep reading until the subject changes. In this case, we're being asked, what does terrestrial contamination look like? What are the characteristics? First, let's find out where they talk about ter terrestrial contamination in the passage. And I see it here, okay, and I keep reading because I also see it here too. Okay, in our own words, this underlying portion really means the meteorite that has been on Earth for 13,000 years might have celestial contamination, but McKay doesn't think it's terrestrial contamination because the PHAs increase as you go deeper into the meteorite, and that's the opposite of what you'd expect for terrestrial contamination. Or in other words, for terrestrial contamination, you'd expect more PHAs on the outside and fewer on the inside. Okay, great. Let's see if we get like an answer choice that says anything like that. Well, A is out, because just because a meteorite's been on Earth for 13,000 years doesn't mean it necessarily would, would have terrestrial contamination. B is also out. Where it came from has nothing to do with it. C, I, you know, I don't quite understand it. So let's just park it in the maybe bucket for right now and figure out more when we get a handle on it. D is a comparison, which we know are almost never right. Plus, they never even mention another meteorite in the passage. E, E actually looks pretty good. 
That's basically what the underlying portion says. Terrestrial contamination means more PHAs on the surface, fewer down deep. So E definitely goes into the maybe bucket. So if we have to choose between C and E, we definitely go with E. E says pretty much exactly what the passage said, and nowhere in the underlying portion do we see anything about biological or non-biological processes. So C is out, E is the right answer. Good job. Okay, this is a tricky one and also an inference because you see the word suggest. So stop the video, give it a try. When you come back, we'll go over it. Okay, first, get the question into your own words. We need to know McKay's point of view on PAHs that are formed from non-organic stuff. Second, find the part of the passage that talks about PAHs and organic and non-organic stuff. Okay, I see organic mentioned here. Are we done? No, no, they give an example. Okay, is that it? No. Uh, McKay gives his argument here and talks about organisms and non-biological processes, which sounds a lot like the same thing as non-organic processes. Okay, so now we get the underlying stuff into our own words. Skeptics think that the PHAs that McKay found are necessarily from organic processes. Maybe those PHAs came from something like the formation of stars. Now McKay counters back that there's a particular combination of PAHs that is more similar to organic sources than from non-organic or non-biological sources like star formations, I guess. Okay, so what does McKay think about non-organic PAHs? He thinks that there's a combination of PAHs that tells us if it's organic or non-organic. Okay, do we get anything like that in the answer choices? Well, A is out. The underlying portion never even mentions anything about that 13,000 years on Earth. That's a completely different part of the passage. B is out too. They never even say the word Mars. Now C is tempting. We're going to have to think about this. Remember, the question is asking about non-organic PAHs. So, does McKay think that non-organic PAHs are not produced by stars? No, McKay thinks that non-organic PAHs could very well be produced by stars. Now, he doesn't happen to think that the PAHs on this particular meteorite are produced by stars because he sees a combination of stuff on this particular meteorite that tells him that's organic, but he does think that non-organic PAHs could be produced by a star. That means C is out. Now, D is pretty interesting. Uh, let's see, we said that McKay thinks that a combination of PAHs is the key. That's what tips you off to knowing if the PAHs were produced by organic and or non-organic processes. And guess that what? That's exactly what this answer choice says. D looks pretty good. E is another comparison. They never even talk about other meteorites. D is correct. Notice that on these hard inference questions, we spend most of our time getting the question and the evidence into our own words. And I know, I know, it feels like that's slowing you down, but it's not. Because if you do that, the answer choices become very clear as you go through them, and you'll actually move faster and more accurately. Okay, good job. Okay, so these are the key takeaways. You want to exit the passage with a very good understanding of the main points. Remember, as you read, just stick to the things that you can actually understand. You want a much less good understanding of the details. Don't let examples and jargon and description bog you down. That's really, really, really a great way to waste a lot of time and not get all the questions right. Finally, and this is super important, Read incredibly and stupidly, literally. Don't assume anything. It needs to be there in black and white. Okay, great job. So when you don't quite understand what's going on in a reading comp passage, and let's face it, that's the way they write these things, what you want to do is lean on those first four questions and lean on the main points of the paragraph. That's going to lead you to the right answers. Okay, great job. We'll see you next time.